Hey guys, here are 10 furniture painting tips to make you a better furniture artist. My first tip might seem like an obvious one, but it's obvious for a reason, and that is to always prep your pieces. Okay, so you have this lovely piece of furniture that you've just got from the thrift shop or the charity shop or the antique center, wherever you've got it from, it's beautiful, but it's kind of icky kind of old, it's got loads of gross stuff on it, maybe even gross stuff that you can't see, and so it needs a really, really good clean. Imagine going out on a great night out and the next day you wake up and you've forgotten to take all the makeup off your face and then you go straight in there and put more makeup over the top. It's not nice and I think we've all been there at some point, I know I have, but it's not nice. So when we paint over a piece of furniture that isn't prepped properly, not only is it psychologically kind of gross, but also it can cause issues with the painted ear in. So whenever you get a piece of furniture, just see what prep needs to be done first. Does it need to be sanded? Is it sticky? Is it dirty? It's all dirty. Does it need a primer because it's really smooth and slippery? Are there any cracks in the veneer or anything that needs to be removed or filled in? So just decide what prep your furniture piece needs before you get to that painting so that you set up the best possible foundation that you can. So my second tip is to do you. And what I mean by that is not get too caught up in what other people are doing. It's really easy with social media to be kind of fixated on maybe one person um, and their style or maybe um, a group of people and the style that they're saying is better than everybody else's because I've been there. I've been in a position in the past where I've thought, wow, I'm not doing that style and that's where the cool kids are. Maybe I should be doing that style, but no. You should do the style that you feel is the most you, is the most true to you and just try and own it. I own it. You'll often be told that you should niche down on a certain style, on a certain look, on a certain branding. Well, I do think there's an element of truth to that. Like you should be branding your business, but you should be branding your business in a unique way that is you, that is your personality, that is your values, that is your style. It's not a good idea to brand in the same way as somebody else. And that's the same with niching down. So you may be told, okay, you need to niche down on a certain look and you maybe should niche down on the look that is trending right now. But the funny thing about trends is that they come and go. While there's a certain element of adjusting your branding ever so slightly and adjusting your painting style ever so slightly sometimes to kind of go with the times and go with the trend because nobody wants a piece of furniture in their home that's dated. That being said, I'm going to totally contradict myself here. There is also an element where your style will suit somebody out there. It depends just how niche you want to be. Also, if you follow all these trends, if you follow all these furniture painters or furniture artists that are already doing something that's massively saturated, you're going to have a more competitive market out there. So it's really important just to kind of do you, enjoy it, have fun, and don't get bogged down in what other people are doing. The same goes for the paint that you use. Make sure you find a paint brand that works for you. So you will be told that every paint brand is the best thing Under the sun. ever. And while I have my own paint brand that I feel that way about, it's not necessarily going to be the same for everybody out there. Each paint brand does different things. Each paint brand has different kind of colors and different pigments and different textures and thickness and finishes, etc., etc. There's so many different kind of paints out there. So maybe try a few and then find a paint that works for you and remember to do you. So my third tip is to pick a furniture that you actually love and you want to paint. So when I first started as a furniture painter, I would take any old freebie that anybody would give me. It didn't matter what state it was in, how cheap it was, how much work <laughs> needed to be done, I would take that furniture. And I'll tell you what happened. I have a single box kind of bedroom at home that is literally piled to the ceiling with furniture that I have taken for free that I maybe have tried painted and it's not worked because I haven't loved the furniture that I'm working on or is simply just in the bedroom or in the furniture junk room just sitting there because honestly I'm not inspired by it, I don't want to touch it. So it's really important to pick a piece of furniture that you know you're going to really enjoy working on and find that kind of furniture style that you know you're going to enjoy. When you do pick a piece of furniture, one thing that I've learned is to look at how much damage there is on that piece of furniture 
This is something that I've been really bad with in the past, mainly because I'm a little bit of a people pleaser. When I'm there in the shop, especially if it's somebody's independent business, I'm kind of really wanting to please them and support their business. And in the past, especially when I was new to this, I didn't ask as many questions as I should have. Um, so, and, and really looked into the furniture as I should have. So that means I've taken furniture pieces home that have been damaged way beyond than I want to personally deal with, um, that I've had damage that might not be repairable, um, smells, you know, like cigarette smells and things that are really difficult to get rid of. Or even stink would say that stinks. It's really important as well to know how much work you want to do on that piece of furniture to fix it up before you actually start painting it. If you're the kind of person that loves a challenge and also loves the DIY and woodwork side of things, then maybe you're quite comfortable and happy taking on a piece of furniture that maybe needs that extra bit of love. For me personally, I really love the painting part, but not a huge, huge fan of the uh, DIY and woodwork aspect of it. So I try to find furniture now that I can just pretty much go ahead with straight away and paint without having to faff around too much. If there is a piece of furniture that I really love and does need some extra work, then what I am comfortable doing with now is haggling a little bit with the business owner on the price and saying, do you mind knocking a little bit of money off of this because for this reason. So just make sure that you pick furniture that you want to paint, that you're happy to paint, that you're happy to do whatever work needs doing on it. Okay, tip four. <laughs> it's important to paint every now and then for you. So this tip is more for the people that do this as a full-time business who rely on making money. As small-time business owners that are furniture artists and painters and cyclists, we all need to make money. Therefore, sometimes we have to do work and paint jobs that maybe we're not really that keen on doing, that maybe doesn't set our solar light or whatever. You know, certain commissions, Maybe we need to put things in our shop every now and then that's painted white when really we want to be painted in bright pink or something. I don't know. So I am not telling anybody to stop doing their bread and butter stuff, you know? What I would say though is every now and then, make sure you paint a piece for you. Make sure you paint a piece that's going to make you happy, that's going to make your heart happy, that's going to just kind of get the creative juices flowing so that it doesn't feel like such a chore and a job. Because what I find is sometimes you do just paint for somebody else in the sense of you're taking on commissions you don't love or you're painting certain colors you don't love because you need to make that money. And that is where the job aspect comes of it comes into it and the creative side slowly disappears. So what I would really suggest is that every now and then just grab a piece of furniture and just go crazy with it, enjoy it and just have fun painting for you. Maybe every one in four pieces, maybe one every month. I don't know, whatever works for you, however much you feel you need to do that, just make sure that you take some time out for you to remember why you're painting in the first place and enjoy it. Tip five is get experimental every now and then. Kind of ties in with the last one. So sometimes we all have this fear of trying something new and it not working for whatever reason. It stops us then from trying different things. It might be that you're scared of what people think. It might be that you're scared of ruining a piece of furniture. It might be that you're scared of wasting product. I don't know. But for whatever reason, there's a barrier stopping you from trying something new. So every now and then, get out of your box, get out of your comfort zone, get out of your own head and just paint something experimental, something different that you've not tried before. I was an experimental girl for Christ's sake! Because also what can happen, even if you have that freedom to be totally creative and as creative as what you want to be, we can also get stuck in a little bit of a creative rut. Just creating the same things with the same colours, the same styles, because that's what we know people like. That's because what we're used to doing. But in order to grow and learn as an artist, it's really important that we really push ourselves to learn different techniques and different styles so that we can keep growing and bettering ourselves. And also, just to keep those creative juices flowing so we don't feel like getting up and painting every day is such a chore. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys now, I feel like I have been in a little bit of a creative rut lately. You know, I often do a lot of stuff with blues and greens and texture, but it's almost become second nature for me to look at a piece and think, oh, I'll do it this way because I do pretty much 80% of my pieces that way or whatever. So now I personally feel like I'm in a transitional place in my own business and in my own style and in my own growth where I am trying to expand myself now into new areas of artwork and mixed media on furniture so that I can continue growing and loving what I do as a furniture artist. Tip six is to make sure you take your time or as much time as you feel like you can when painting a piece, especially if you're painting that piece that is going to be the piece that makes you happy. 
you know, the piece that's getting the creative juices flowing. So again, I've been guilty of this. I've been very guilty of thinking, yes, I've got an awesome idea. I want to paint it as quick as I can, or oh, I need to post on social media, I need content. I really need to get this out there as soon as I can. And then what happens is often is things go wrong. You know, you might not let things dry properly. Um, you might not give the attention to detail the piece needs. You might, you're just not giving the piece justice for whatever reason especially if you're trying a new technique. So be patient with yourself, be patient with the piece that you're working on and remember just to enjoy it. We're not always in a rush to get things finished, just remember that. We live in a world now that is so fast paced, especially on social media where we're kind of encouraged to get things out there as quickly as we can. You know, we're supposed to be like boom, 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 boom every single day, new content, new ideas, new inspiration and at the end of the day, we're just people. And not only will that cause burnout in ourselves, it's also one of the fastest ways to become uninspired by what we're doing. Uninspired. And also a way to demotivate ourselves when it comes to actually painting a piece. So again, I've been there and I've just come out of this kind of weird phase myself. I, I would definitely recommend taking your time, especially just every now and then, just enjoy a piece. Don't rush it, don't set any time limits on it. Just keep chipping away at it if you need to and just remember to really take in all of the colors that you're using, all of, the all of the techniques, all of the textures and just really enjoy it. My next tip is to buy good brushes and then take care of them. There are two different kinds of brushes that you can generally buy, synthetic brushes and natural bristle brushes. Know what kind of brush that you want for your project. So synthetic brushes tend to be really soft, really good for soft blends and brush stroke free finishes whereas natural bristled brushes tend to be really amazing for texture you know for stippling for getting brush strokes in there for building up paint and textures and all of that good stuff that I generally tend to like so make sure you know what brush that you want for the project that you're working on but also then take care of them I'm gonna sound like a total hypocrite here because this is something I need to work on myself let me I'll show you this is like the brush walk of shame. So all of these brushes in here need more than a little bit of TLC. Thankfully, I've got some um, brush cleaner by Dixie Bell, which basically it's a really, really strong brush cleaner. Look at this one. What is that? I don't even know. I don't know if there's any save in this one. This one looks like it would be more fitted to playing a game of sports, like whacking a ball with it or something. Now, Harris delivers KY ball hit toward the hole, rather than painting. However, I do have some um, brush cleaner that is hopefully going to sort these out. It's really good for taking off old paint, off otherwise really good paint brushes. So make sure you make it part of your daily routine to clean those brushes as soon as you're finished with them. Don't do a me, because that's not good. And also it's very expensive to keep replacing good brushes, so make sure you take care of them. Tip number eight is to learn about color theory. So I had no idea what this was when I first started painting. I was just like, there's, there's a pink, there's an orange, there's green. <laughs> I know orange and red kind of work together and I know blue and yellow make green. And I know if I add white to stuff, it makes it a little bit lighter. <laughs> That's pretty much as far as my knowledge went with colors when I first started painting. It's a really good idea to learn about the color wheel to show you which colors are the kind of opposites and the contrasting of each other. It's really good to learn about how different tones and hues make up certain greens or certain browns or certain yellows and things. For example, you might not know that a certain grey has a lot of blue in it or it might have a lot of brown in it until you really start to look into those depths of colour. So really think about the colour you're using sometimes. Like if you are using a grey, look at it and think about, well, what kind of grey is this? What makes this different to all the other greys that I've got? I know, as silly as it sounds, try and see what undertone of colours are working to make that grey the grey that it is, if that makes sense. Really, really try and understand what's happening with the colours because then what this can do is it can really help you take your colour mix into the next level. So let's say you have a limited budget on paints that you can buy and you have a limited amount of colours. If you really understand colour theory, then it will really teach you how to mix your colours on a budget so that you're not having to go out there and spend a ton of money on different paints. 
It also means when you are doing your painting, you'll also understand which colors complement each other and which colors are really good at contrasting and creating drama. So we'll also take your furniture painting up to the next level as well. Tip number nine is to take inspiration where you can find it. So this is a really cheesy tip, but this is something that rings true to me. So I personally take a lot of inspiration from old things. I like old stuff. I like stuff that's aged. I like the idea of history behind it. I like the idea that over time it's worn away and created this unique patina or unique chippiness or whatever. I just like old stuff. Um, I like old stuff for the styles, the fashions as well. You know, I'm actually a huge fan of history, especially makeup and fashion and things through history as well and decor and architecture. So to me, it's really interesting to look at old stuff and then try and create it in a faux finish kind of way. So to get inspiration from old stuff, I don't know what this is, um, I might go to a historical city like York and look at the architecture, or I might go to an old manor home, or I might even just simply sit on Pinterest and try and soak in some old photos of buildings that have dilapidated and things, or old French clothing or old French decor. You know, I really just get into it and like to explore in various different ways. So find what inspires you and really just dive into it. Okay, and tip 10, and my last tip is to take time for you. So the nature of our work is very fast paced. It is the idea that we have to be creating ideas all of the time and it can really take its toll on us, I think, and it can really burn you out if you're not careful. I find that every now and then I just like to take a little bit of time out from social media and from painting. As much as I love painting, every now and then I need a break. Um, and I just need to totally zone out from it. I need to zone out from that world and focus on something else. And that way I can kind of reset myself, rejuvenate myself, relax, and then come back totally refreshed. So if you're getting to a point where you're feeling, wow, well, I'm feeling so bogged down and stressed by everything that's going on right now in the furniture painting world, and you're just feeling like it's draining you more than it's energizing you, because remember painting, this is meant to be fun. We're meant to be in a fun industry, we're painting. You know, it's meant to be creative and enjoyable. If you're getting to a point where you're feeling like maybe it's not so enjoyable, maybe that's your body and your mind telling you that you need to rest. You need to give yourself a little bit of TLC and you need to just go and do something else. TLC? Yeah. And don't ever feel guilty for that because that's a normal way to feel. Sometimes when we're on social media and we, we just have these images constantly at us, images and figures and numbers and data and insights and it just can get really overwhelming especially because social media presents this perfect image of people sorry i'm not perfect so personally i i realize now when i'm starting to feel that way and honestly i totally switch off social media for a day or two and that's not something i really should say as a content creator but every now and then i need it i need to like i, I need to so don't ever feel guilty if you feel that way. And the best way to really bring out the creativeness in you is to really kind of honor that and to really look after yourself. So those are my 10 tips for improving yourself as a furniture painter. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite or if there are any that you think that I've missed that may help other people. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this video here where I chat about dealing with those nasty trolls online.